Hello and welcome to The Gist. I'm your host, Chris Vetrano, here every week breaking down all the things happening in pop culture and across Bravo. And uh, we've got a jam-packed show. I'm going to get through all of last week's episodes on Bravo. But before we do, we've got to talk about some news coming out of Atlanta. So Kim Zolciak and Croy Bierman have filed for divorce. They also happened to file for divorce the same day that the news came out that they owe $1 million in taxes. So it feels a little bit like a... um, how do you say a coincidence uh, that these two have somehow buried the story about their financial woes with the news of their divorce. So there's a lot of people that are saying that it might be a sham and that they truly aren't wanting this divorce, but that they wanted to sort of get ahead of some of these other storylines that are being put out there. Um, But some, some pretty crazy things have happened uh shortly after the news broke uh kim had said that she wanted sole custody um and then croy filed and said that he wanted full custody he said that he's currently um he has their four children uh in in his care currently and that uh he's seemingly poking that like kim may be an unfit mother and so this could get really ugly and all i've got to say is I need Andy and I need a camera because we need to be seeing this. What, don't be tardy for the party. Like, let's reboot it because I want to see all of this play out. So it sounds like, you know, I don't think it is a sham. I mean, Kim uh, posted on her. She changed her bio in her Instagram. She has since taken it down, but she added something in her bio about that she was look- on the hunt for her new big papa. And... I, luckily, fans like screenshotted it before she changed it be, because that's just wild. So it looks like this might get really ugly, and I'm sure this isn't the last that we're going to be talking about this. So they are headed for Splitsville. Um, so Kim's going to have to start learning how to use an Uber um, or a Lyft, and uh, because my gosh, like Croy was her personal Lyft driver. Uh, all the time, just sort of waiting in the parking lot anywhere that she needed to go. So it will be interesting, too, if she tries to make her way back on to Real Housewives of Atlanta for next season. Given this news, I could definitely see Bravo wanting to bring her back to sort of play out this new chapter of her life. So we shall see. Um, But getting right into uh, this last week's episodes, um, starting with Summer House, we get the sort of... uh, we pick up where Carl and uh, Lindsay got engaged um, in their surprise engagement. And so back at the house, everyone thinks that they're getting ready for a bonfire. Uh, Kyle pulls everyone together to do a toast and he reveals to everyone that uh, Carl and Lindsay are currently getting engaged and that they're actually not going to a bonfire. They're going to their uh, after party or their kind of like engagement party. Um, And Danielle has a reaction that I think the only word that I can think of to describe it is unhinged. She was not happy for them. She was, she made it all about her. She was, and now I understand back, like I think when the show first premiered, uh, Danielle and Gabby were on Watch What Happens Live. And Andy asked, who do you think is going to have the most to, um, to answer for at the reunion and Gabby said Danielle to Danielle's surprise. And I thought like, wow, that seems surprising because we know Danielle to be kind of a cool girl. And, but now it all makes sense because she is not being cool here. Um, So she goes to the, everyone goes to the party. Danielle's crying uncontrollably. I mean, we broke the fourth wall. We had the producers checking in. The producers were like, you don't have to go to this if you don't want. And she's like, of course I have to go. I'm pulling myself together. You know, it was it was a full on reaction, um, unlike something that you would see. I mean, these, you know, this is somebody who is supposedly her best friend. And yes, they've been having problems, but she couldn't seem to be happy for her even in an ounce of happiness in this. And actually, Carl's one of her best friends too and couldn't find this happiness. She was so upset that she wasn't included. And I think there's a part of that that I understand, but at some point you kind of got to pull it together. 
And so they go to the the party and, you know, the producers, of course, cut all of this stuff together. But basically, Danielle just went around friend to friend at the party and was like, yeah, I just found out. No one told me. I'm devastated. Like, so she's spreading that all over the party, which we know is going to probably come back and bite her. And this may be where the end of this uh, friendship or this is where the friendship is going to demise. So, um, but you know, we, everyone's ha trying to in, in celebrate, uh, Carl and Lindsay, uh, her family is there. Um, I did love Paige, uh, Paige is like, she obviously knew. And she's like, in her confessional, she's like, she wore shoulder pads to the beach. She knew she was getting proposed to. You don't wear shoulder pads to the beach if you don't think that you're going to be doing that. But then, she, you know, she's like, but I'm proud of her. Like, she curled her hair. She did all the things. So, you know, she was ready for it. And yes, she was. So, um, and then we get like a flag football game the next day with the with the crew on the beach. You know, that's fun. Sam and uh, Corey make it official. They decide to keep things moving forward after the summer and see where it goes. So we see that going on. But meanwhile, back in the city, Gabby goes on a date, a blind date. And I couldn't really tell if she was enjoying it. It was like a little bit awkward. Um, but we got to see her sort of starting her dating. Um, and then Kyle and Amanda are talking about some medical results that she got. As we know, uh, Amanda has been kind of dealing with some medical things, um, that she was worried potentially would, you know, uh, in, interfere with them wanting to have children. And, um, she did find out that her body was kind of going into, um, post menopausal phase. So it was thinking that she had already gone through menopause. Um, and it, it's a, a lot of the sort of symptoms of that Kyle and her were like, yeah, you have all of these things. Um, and so she, while it wasn't great news, they were going to, you know, put her on some, uh, or she's, she's taking the next steps. I can't, I guess I can't say what they actually are going to do because she hadn't seen the specialist yet, but sounds like they're going to be doing some like hormones therapy and stuff. Um, and she felt good. She felt good that she at least had answers. So was happy for her in that. Um, and then the crew all arrive for the final weekend in the house. Um, Danielle is still very upset. Uh, Robert's there. They're, you know, they're all saying their hellos. It's a little icy. It's a little awkward. Um, and then they all, they all go out and Robert pulls Carl aside and he's like, you know, I want to talk to you. And, and so they bring up, you know, Danielle was upset that like, you didn't include her and you didn't talk to her about that. And Carl's like, look, like I didn't tell any of the girls in the house. And Robert's like, but that's the problem right there is that Danielle's not just one of the other girls in the house. Like you're not treating her as if she's Lindsay's best friend. And that's why Danielle's upset. And so Carl's like, I need to take a break. He storms off. And we get the to be continued. And this is where we know that Carl, you know, flips off the cameras and is like, I don't want cameras around. And so um, I, I guess that's going to be the season finale next week because this is the final week. So um, we will probably see the, you know, full fight that we've been waiting for from the trailer between uh, Danielle and Lindsay. And yeah, it's just, it's not good for them. So um, so that's Summer House. Um, then on our Housewives, we got New Jersey. Um, it starts off with Jennifer Fessler's mother and her mother's twin, um, who, of course, she has to drop. Um, I realize Jennifer Fessler is a bit of a name dropper. Um, she talks that they were best friends with uh, Barbara Streisand. Um, back in the day, I, I doubt that they still are or still see her, but... Um, but yeah, so they, her mother and her twin are characters in themselves. I mean, pull up some cameras for them because I could watch more of that for sure. Um, and then, you know, I, I realized, you know, Marge has had quite an evolution on this show. She really started a fan of the show. You know, she, when she came on, she knew every player. She knew who the girls were. She knew their backgrounds. 
you know, she was just Marge with the pigtails. And I kind of didn't love her the first season. I didn't dislike her. I thought she was like interesting, but I did sort of think that she was a bit too much of a fan. I felt like she knew too much. She was a little bit like a Heather Gay on The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip this last season. It's like she just knew the women's backstories. So it was like she already was walking in with preconceived notions and knew people's storylines that she was never a part of. So she couldn't make her own sort of decisions. But, you know, she's really gone from this sort of like fan who was like friends, who wanted to be friends with everyone, who you know, was clearly trying to like stir drama at times, um, tried to have some really like notable lines, which she, which she does, but she's really kind of turned into the villain, in my opinion. She like with this arsenal that everyone keeps talking about, like she truly does dig up dirt on everyone. And she says that she doesn't, but the irony is that she does have all of these things. And when someone brings, you know, someone up, she says something about it. And um, that was really illustrated this week on the after show um, that wasn't part of uh, the show, but on some online footage. They were talking about Dolores and Polly and why they have yet to get uh, married. And, you know, she says in an interview, like, well, I don't think you can get married when uh, you're still married to your previous wife sort of revealing that Polly is still technically married to his ex-wife, which I don't know how that works out. Her, his current wife, I guess, they're not fully uh, divorced. And so he, she was like, you know, she said something kind of tongue, tongue in cheek, like, oh, I mean, I guess you can give a ring, but you, you know, can't get married. So, um, but she said it with this like evil smile and it's like, oh yeah, she had that. She was just waiting in the wings. And now that Dolores is like really sided with, Danielle and Teresa, and she's like really on that side of everything, it seems like Marge is now going for Dolores. And that's what everyone keeps saying that she does. So she's really kind of turned into this like silent villain. And uh, it's it's been interesting to watch. But, um, but meanwhile, back on this last week's episode, we got uh, Dolores having the dinner with the family, celebrating Frankie's dream job. You know, uh, it was nice because Frank, as we saw the previous week, had, you know, so many feelings about like, I just feel like our family's pulling apart because you've got Polly now and I got Brittany and it used to be the four of us and we had this great dynamic and now it's all changing. And he finally, you know, sees that I think he said something of like, you know, I can see now that the family isn't breaking, it's getting bigger. And that was really nice because I love them. I love the dynamic of that family. And, you know, it reminds me a lot of my own family. And so I really love Dolores and I just love to see them having having fun and, and being, you know, great, even despite all of the kind of like hardship that they've gone through as a family. Um, and then we got Teresa and Louie discussing their wedding plans. Um, and they were, you know, talking about seating charts and doing various things. And we learned that they have not RSVP'd to the rehearsal dinner so you know they show the text messages with teresa and melissa where melissa's like you know you have an rsvp'd are you good to come to the rehearsal dinner we're trying to like get you know the final counts and things and melissa's like yeah no like we only set aside the wedding day so we don't have uh we're not gonna be there for the rehearsal dinner so you know last week or the previous week, we got Louis sort of hot mic moment where he, it was, he said something about that he was not going to invite Joe and Melissa to a dinner that was the night before the rehearsal dinner. And everybody online kind of came for him like, oh, we finally saw the true, true colors. They didn't invite them. And I'm wondering though, like, is this the reason? Because if they haven't RSVP to the actual rehearsal dinner, you're not going to invite them. And they, you know, have said, we've only set aside the night of the wedding, then I could understand why you would say you're not inviting them to this other dinner, because they've already told you they're not available. So, you know, they're, they're, you know, Teresa is trying to get them there. She's trying to include them from what the text messages read, which they're also online. So you can kind of see the whole context of the conversation. She is trying to make sure they're included. 
And they basically shut her down and said, like, we are only available this one time. So, um, you know, but Louis is very upset with Joe. He, you know, talks about that Joe Judice called him um, early on in the relationship with Teresa and said that he warned him about Joe Gorga and that, like, he will do this. He will try to tear you apart from Teresa because he just uh, he gets jealous about this and and I said this on a previous episode of like these two siblings have you know almost this like incestuous relationship growing up I think and I'm, I'm not actually saying that that there was any kind of like physical incest but I think that they're they were just so tight and they were so bonded and they cared about each other and protected each other so much that neither one of them ever, there was never going to be anyone better for them than themselves in each other's lives. And so Gorga has always had problems with Teresa's men in her life. And Teresa's always had problems with Melissa. And, you know, it's just, it's unfortunate, but I mean, who knows, maybe they'll be able to get a, get past this at some point, but I don't, I don't think anytime soon. Um, and then we've got, um, Danielle and her mother are talking about her situation with her brother. And, you know, Danielle is like, I want to, I want things to be better. And I wish that things were better, but you know, he won't even talk to us. And um, we learned that he, that the brother does sort of talk to the dad, but does not talk to the mother because um, he feels like the mother took Danielle's side. And so, yeah, he's pretty estranged. Um, there's been a lot of rumors online that, you know, Bravo is probably reaching out to the brother to try to get them on for the next season. Um, very similarly to how they did with Melissa. So it, it would be interesting to see if that happened. But if this brother is really, truly not willing to talk to Danielle, then I don't know how they would make that work in this format, because you have to come together as a cast. And so there would have to be some kind of amends to get there. Um, and then, uh, we see Jen Aiden is moving her brother into the apartment that she got for him. Um, you know, he got, he had his marriage, um, in their culture, it's like an arranged marriage. And so, uh, she was having green card issues, so they had to move back. Um, but they were able to come home and Jen wanted them to have a nice place so that they could kind of get on their feet. Um, and then, Jen's talking to her brother and, and talking about Bill and kind of what's going on with Bill and that they're not going to therapy anymore because Bill doesn't want to. And, you know, she's like, it's weird because sometimes like Bill just like comes home from work and he doesn't even come into the house. He just like goes straight to the pool house and we don't even know that he's home. And, you know, in, in Jen's culture, it's the men work and the women raise the families and there is a lot of separation and there is a lot of that. And it's, I think that that's more normal for them, but I think also Jen Aiden, especially being in the spotlight like this is really starting to like question if this is a, the type of relationship that she wants. And so um, I am, I am just very curious as to how this is going to play out. I, I feel a bit of doom and gloom for this relationship. But obviously, I don't wish that upon anyone. Um, but I think there's more to come with that storyline. And then um, we get Rach an update on the adoption case with Rachel. Uh, Rachel, you know, they have reached out to the mother. They're trying to find her. They have not been successful, but the process had just getting, gotten started. Um, and so she and uh, her husband talk about, like, you know, they should probably... Uh, tell Aiden, or Jaden is his name, Jennifer, Jennifer Aiden, and Jaden, Fuda, um, Jaden, that she's going to adopt him. And they're like, so should we call him in and, and tell him this? And I was kind of like, well, I'm surprised you didn't do that already. I mean, he seemed very happy about it. He was like, I always wanted you to be my mother and you to adopt me. So he's happy about it. But it did seem a little strange that like they got the process started without talking to him first because he is, I think, 15. So it's like he's old enough to have that conversation and be a part of that decision earlier than that. So there's been a lot of stuff online that why didn't Rachel do this sooner? And why did she wait until she was on a TV show to like 
make this a storyline and it feels a bit inauthentic. And so people have been coming for her a little bit on, on socials. Um, and then we, we get another scene where Louis is just going in on Joe Gorga. Uh, they're talking about, they're getting ready for the prohibition party, uh, that Dolores and Polly are hosting, um, which we're going to see next week as part of the finale. Um, but yeah, Louis goes in, he's, you know, just, he's like, I don't, I want to talk to him as much as I want to talk to a rat in the street. I'm done with him. You know, he tells, uh, Teresa, he's like, you know, if you were, if you saw me in a snake pit, would you pull me out? And she's like, of course. And he's like, well, I'm pulling you out of the snake pit. Like we're done with this toxic behavior, this horrible treatment that your brother's giving you. We're done with it. So it's it's heating up and then we get the scene for the finale next week which we see they come to blows we get a we get a fight and then also we see that danielle is going to reveal to melissa that uh, marge has this rumor in her arsenal about melissa kissing another guy so it's going to be an explosive end to the season and then i believe after the season finale we get a Teresa and louis wedding episode and then the reunions. So that's my, that's what I'm guessing happens. Um, so, but because uh, Melissa and Joe were not the wedding, I think we probably just can't call it the season finale because um, the whole cast won't be in that episode. Um, and then we've got, so last night we got Real Housewives of Atlanta, second episode of the season. We pick up at the party. Um, that Sonia is throwing for her husband's birthday. Candy is still on 10 with Courtney bobbing around and Candy's upset because, you know, Courtney came for her, who, by the way, we learned Courtney and Rolf, um, Drew's husband, are cousins. And they didn't know it until the party. They like met and then they started talking about cousins and then they were like, wait, your cousin so-and-so? That's my cousin. So we're cousins. So that was that's wild information um and then meanwhile while candy's you know trying to everyone's trying to cool candy down and and then martel and sheree um and then kenya they all start to go at it um because martel is like i didn't ever m message you and kenya's like but you did and i have the receipts to show you and then he pulls out his and he's like oh yeah i did message you but that was like two years ago and he's like so what if i was trying to you know get with you two years ago and it, it was just like so wild. And then he just started like throwing insults at Kenya. Of course, she didn't like that. So they, you know, she's screaming, once a cheater, always a cheater, disrespectful. It's, it, it goes off. And then everyone kind of is like, we got to get out of this party because it's, it's not going well. Um, and then, you know, the episode starts, but we still got no intros and we got no taglines. So we're still waiting on those. Uh, for this season, I've noticed that Bravo is doing this more and more. They like start the season with a bunch of to be to continued episodes, and then we don't get the taglines. So I'm hopeful that we get them next week because I don't think we got it to be continued um, this week. And so, I mean, it did sort of end in a ominous place, but I think the scene is probably over. So I'm thinking that next week is when we're going to get these taglines. Um, but then, you know, we didn't see Drew in the first episode. She was in Chicago taking care of her family. Uh, her dad has Alzheimer's. Um, and so she's been there supporting him and uh, her mother. So she's back. Um, so we get her back in the opening scene. Uh, you know, she talks uh, throughout the episode. We see that she's like doing this musical journey. Ralph is producing music for her. She says that they're the best that they've been in years. Um, she calls the studio their happy place together as a couple. Um, and honestly, I think her song is like pretty good. Uh, from what I was hearing, I need to probably pull it up on the old Spotify, but um, and give it a full end to end listen. But some of these housewives are like actually coming out with good music. Now we got we're kind of getting past the uh, Countess Luann, Melissa Gorga on display eras and getting more into, you know, real singers doing their thing with Candace really kind of leading the charge. Obviously Candy is a, is like on another level of her own, but Drew has got it. So, um, I'm interested to see where that kind of goes. Um, 
But, you know, it's obviously cringy to see her say that she's in the best place that they've been in years because we know at the end of the season they are filing for divorce. So it's going to be interesting to see, like, is she lying through her teeth on all of this? Is she trying to convince herself that they're in the best place? Or is something going to really take a left turn? I just, I'm not sure. Um, and then uh, Sonia and Candy are having lunch. Um, they're discussing kind of what happened at the party and the Courtney thing. And, you know, Candy's like, did you defend me when she's been talking all this trash about me? So we're continuing to kind of build the storyline of that. Uh, Sonia mentions that it's BravoCon in the, this week. She's like, oh, BravoCon's this week. So from a timeline perspective, we kind of know what's happening there. And I think because a lot of things happen at BravoCon, which I think we're going to see play out next week um, in next week's episode. So I think they needed to kind of put that in the episode so that um, it's it's hinting of the things to come. Um, but what I do love, too, is the editors are the best in Atlanta. They like when Candy's like, yeah, did you defend me when Courtney was talking all this trash? And Sonny's like, um, and the you know producers stop uh do a still of sonia thinking about it but then in the cloud show the scene of her just like laughing hysterically when uh courtney's saying all this stuff and so and then you know they've got side by sides uh confessionals with candy and sonia where you know candy's like i know sonia wasn't defending me i'm sure she was just laughing along with it and thinking it was hilarious um and so they're just so good that they make the show honestly even through the like dramatic moments the editors make Real Housewives of Atlanta a comedy. Like I am so entertained every t every episode I watch. They're they're getting better and better too. Um, and then uh, Candy and Todd go to their restaurant Blaze um, because they're doing a tasting of some new food. Uh, Candy's cousin who works at Blaze comes in. He's like in a sling. They're just sort of like chatting. They're like, oh yeah, let's talk about the food and various things. And the producer comes in and breaks the fourth wall. And he's like, okay, hold on. I gotta, I gotta ask, are we going to talk about the elephant in the room? And Todd and Candy are like, we can't talk about anything because it's legal issues and blah, blah, blah. So then, you know, of course, through the editing and then Candy does talk about it in her confessional, we learned that there's, there was a shooting at Blaze, which was also in the news. And uh, and a disgruntled employee of Blaze ended up shooting Candy's cousin, which is why he's in the sling. Um, and so producers are annoyed that they're not talking about it because like this was probably why the whole scene was set up at the restaurant with the cousin. Um, so I think they were probably like, we needed, we need the story. Like we need to talk about it. Um, and then of course, all the girls are like, oh, we, we don't want this to happen. Like violence is on the rise in Atlanta, but we of course don't want this to happen at Candy's restaurants and we're feeling so bad. And, uh, ew. uh, and then of course, Sheree gives another classic Sheree line. Um, she's like, we, we don't know if when we go to OLG, we're going to get biscuits or bullets. Um, which I feel like is going to go down as one of the, the great, um, moments of, of Sheree's arsenal of, one-liners because she is the queen of it um and uh then so i and i do love when they break the fourth wall too it just it brings it in to remind you that you're watching this like reality show and it's not so produced because they step in and they kind of like this is what we want you to talk about because these are like real things going on in your life and i like that i like to see the producers push for that so, um, but there, then, then Todd's talking about all these restaurants he's going to open and Candy's like, you don't even want to be a restaurateur. Like you want to be like doing movies and film and producing things. And I don't understand why we're opening like 19 restaurants. So, um, and then, uh, we got, we kind of get some, like, I thought filler scenes, Kenya doing some, uh, tennis with her daughter and friend, and she's kind of talking about what's going on with Sheree, um, definitely teasing that the tension is building between them. Um, you know, we got another scene with Drew in the studio talking about her new song. Um, but then in the final uh, kind of scene is Sheree at her distribution center for She by Sheree. She finally is really addressing what happened. She's like, you know, I felt really good about the fashion show last season. 
And then, you know, I was 110%, I was on cloud nine, and then the website crashed and it was horrible. And, you know, but we're gonna get it back up, we're gonna get it running. And, you know, so they're showing, you know, her sweatshirts that people are buying, I guess. And uh, probably, they've probably been waiting eight weeks. And again, producers are kind of showing clips of all the stuff that had happened online and in podcasts and uh, news headlines and stuff about how She by Sheree is like, was kind of a big dumpster fire of a launch. Um, meanwhile, Sheree is just like, yeah, it was amazing. Um, and then Kenya comes uh, to check in. They seem to be like in good place. They're having like some good banter. Um, and then, you know, Sheree's like, let's talk about what happened. And they just kind of like go back and forth. And I think Kenya is actually just like, girl, I, I'm looking out for you. Like you're going after the same types of guys that are either cheaters or they're abusive in some kind of way. And like, I don't want you to keep doing that. And this guy was like aggressive and came at me and said horrible things to me as a woman. And that's unacceptable. And you just need to like realize and Sheree is like, why do you always have to call black men aggressive? And you're, you've got a habit of that. And she's kind of defending a lot of the men in Sheree's life and that have been abusive to her in various ways. And so, um, you know, they ultimately kind of get to a place where they're like, we got to agree to disagree and move on from this because we're clearly not on the same side. And then that's the episode. So, and then we get, you know, scenes from next week, which looks explosive as Atlanta continues to deliver. And I'm loving seeing Candy get in the mess this season because she's been kind of sitting on the sidelines, straddling, straddling the fence, which is what our, you know, Kyle Richards loves to do on Beverly Hills. And they like keep getting away with it because they're like the OGs or the, they're these people that are kind of like the matriarchs of the, of the franchise. But it's like, you got to get in it. Otherwise, we start to get bored. And so um, I love seeing Candy do that. And hopefully Kyle was taking some notes since they're filming. Um, and then uh, Vanderpump Rules last week again. So this episode last week, it was intended to be the season finale. So we have to remember that. So there's a lot of stuff happening that's really kind of trying to like wrap up storylines. Um, so... Uh, there, you know, there's, I can't remember if it starts with the scene or if this is just sort of like the first scene that blew me away, but we see Raquel buy the lightning bolt necklace. Um, her and Charlie are out shopping. She's like, I'm going to treat myself to something for my birthday. We learn that it's like $780 for this like gold little lightning bolt. Seems a little expensive for what it is. Um... But as we now know, Tom and her wore these matching lightning bolt necklaces as a sign to each other that they loved each other. And so it was it was wild seeing her actually buy it. We saw like where all of that started in that moment. Um, so we see that scene. Uh, we uh, sit down. The Toms are at the restaurant. They sit down. You know, we learn that... You know, Ariana's not buying pens and batteries for the house. And Tom is just like creating this narrative, which Schwartz is going along with. Like you can tell that Schwartz is just like, okay, I'm going to ask some questions about your relationship with Ariana. That's going to help you tell the story that you're unhappy with her. And uh, yeah, they just keep kind of creating this narrative that Ariana is problematic and that she's not delivering enough for the relationship. And it's, it's not great. And so um, he's, you know, talking about how they're not connected. And, you know, it's interesting because um, some folks online have done these side by sides, where Tom said the exact and I'm saying exact word for word thing about Kristen, when he was cheating on Kristen with Ariana. And now he's saying that about Ariana. And it's just, it's wild seeing these things side by side that he literally has the same exact defense for the reasons why he's like not connecting. Um, and then Tom and she sit down to chat and he's, you know, trying to like, it kind of was like this like lightweight conversation and Ariana's laughing. Then all of a sudden he's like, I just feel like we're not connected. And it was like, oh, he clearly had a motive in that scene that he was like, he's like, you, you know, you you don't want to do the things that I like to do. And she's like, well, you don't like to do the things that I like to do. 
And he's like, well, I'm not going to watch 500 episodes of Love Island. And she's like, well, then you're not going to like enjoy hanging out with some of my friends when we just talk about Love Island all the time. So that's why I don't invite you to do that. But there are things I do like to do that you do without me, like go to the Abbey. <laughs> and as we know, he was there with Raquel alone. So, you know, there's they're having this conversation. He's like, well, we need to have sex more than four times a year. And she's like, well, I can't have sex with someone that I like feel like is a stranger. Like, you don't ever want to spend time with me. And then in his confessional, the producers are like, what would you want to do to spend time with Ariana? And he's like, you know, I want to like take mushrooms and like look at the stars. I want to go hang gliding. And, you know, he's just, I mean, he sounds like he's having a midlife crisis, honestly. He, he's so out of his mind and out of reality. And so they have this conversation and she's like, okay, well, we both have to make an effort and let's work on it. And they kind of come to like an end of that, which is I think where we were trying to, where producers assumed we were going. Because we do know that the week prior, when we saw the whole scene where Lala was telling her about how Tom didn't leave the party and Katie had like had the whole thing about whether or not they were in an open relationship because of Raquel, we have heard now that Ariana, when the cameras went down, was very upset with producers because she was like, it seems as though you guys are trying to build a story that Tom is like, unfaithful to me or that Tom is like Tom and I are in a bad place. And so she was very upset. And so Andy, cause he asked the producers, didn't you guys know about S Scandival? Like this whole thing, it's right in front of your faces. And like, how did you guys miss this? And they were like, we went with Ariana and like Ariana was like, this is not happening. They are friends. I'm friends with them too. Like, like this isn't happening and we need to stop with the storyline. And so she really was the reason that they didn't pursue a lot of those things. Um, and then also as an aside, so last, the previous week, I also was like, there is no way these people didn't know because Lala, as we know in the previous episode, when they're doing that kind of intro, fast forwarding, rewinding um, to kind of piece together all these stories about Raquel staying the night at Tom's and when Lala and James are sitting there and they're like, and she's like, I think that there's feelings for Raquel. And it's like, well, Lala just said it. So how did she then claim that she was surprised? And I was like, something must happen. Well, Lala has since come out and said that she filmed her and James filmed that scene. And I believe the scene where it's Katie, Lisa, Christina Kelly, and Lala at the table talking about Tom not leaving the party because he was wanting to stay at the party with Raquel. I think that um, those two scenes in particular, Lala confirmed that there are some scenes in the last two episodes that they filmed after they found out about Scandaval to help build the storyline and to help like the storyline feel more natural. So I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I can't figure out like that doesn't feel authentic because she didn't know and it makes it look like she really knows. And that's why she has this conversation with Ariana at the party of like, Hey, he didn't, he lied to you. It seems as though she's trying to put it in Ariana's face. And really at the time she, I guess, didn't know what was happening. She just knew that Tom was lying to Ariana about not just wanting to be at the party longer. So anyways, that's, that's a little behind the scenes. Um, but then we get the something about her sandwich tasting kind of pre-launch party, which is our, our what we thought was our finale party. Um, Lisa meets Allie. James and Allie have to dip early because, um, and now I'm using dip. Oh God, don't don't let don't let that become part of my uh, my narr my narration of anything because there's so many definitions when you talk about uh, Vanderpump Rules uh, about what dip out means, but. Um, but James and Allie have to go because James is doing his DJ set. Um, and so we kind of get their finale moment. Um, they're wrapped up. Um, and then, you know, Tom's, well, so they do the, fin they do the sandwich tasting at the actual place and then they go to Sir for more sandwiches and, um, uh, and drinks at Sir. So they're all at Sir you know, for the big finale party, everyone's kind of like 
wrapping up their different storylines and um tom's talking about ariana and into the producers and his confessional and he's like you know all of our issues are not just ariana's fault and it's like well yeah no shit <laughs> they're your fault tom so you know he's just really god he's a horrible human being and you just keep seeing that um and then uh tom schwartz and terry katie's mother who ends up being the like queen of this episode she holds tom accountable they're having like a sit down and you know schwartz is like i'm sad that you know i'm divorcing katie because you were part of my family and now i'm losing you and terry was really sweet and she's like well you'll always be special to me and you'll always be family and i'm always here for you but you really did hurt katie when you made out with raquel and that really hurt and you know terry's crying and tom's kind of getting emotional so tom goes to kind of like sit back because he needs to take a moment after that conversation. And then um, Ariana and Raquel start their face to face, which is one of the most disgusting scenes to watch with what we know, because the entire time that they're talking, you know, Ariana thinks she's talking to her best friend Raquel and Raquel's like, but you, you know, when, you told me that like you and Tom aren't like really having sex and, you know, and she's like, I know, and we're going to work on it. And she's like, but you know, when I realized that I wasn't having sex with James, like I just needed to end it. And I did. And I'm so glad I did. And, you know, she's just trying to convince Ariana to end things with Tom. She's literally trying to make Ariana be the one to break them up because she knows she wants Tom to herself. And it's, it's insane. It's like so diabolical. And I mean, first of all, like just to even have these conversations where she's like, you should want to have sex with Tom. And she's like, look, I find Tom very attractive. Like I want to be with him. I want to make it work. And she was like, so you do want to make it work. And, uh, I, and, uh, Ariana's like, of course I wouldn't be having these conversations if I didn't. And Raquel is like, you know, and Ariana's like, I just have to feel good in my body. And, you know, sometimes I have issues with that. And then our, Raquel starts crying and she's like, I'm just crying because, uh, you know, body image issues and I deal with the same thing and all of these things. But I think the real reason that those tears came is because in that moment, she was like, Ariana does not want this relationship to end. And now I'm having a full blown affair with her man. And I think she realized it in that moment. And that's what those tears were. Oh, it was, it was insane. Um, but then after that scene, Raquel goes to sit down with Katie who wants nothing to do with Raquel. And she's like, I just wanted to congratulate you about tonight. Um, and Katie's like, okay, thank you. And like, you know, now move along. Cause she doesn't want anything to do with her. Um, and by the way, where's Satchel? He is clearly out of the picture. He was in one episode and then he was like, yeah, this is too much for me. Uh, Katie did confirm on Watch What Happens Lives that they're that he's in another relationship now and not part of her life. But um, but I was like, yeah, he didn't even make it more than one episode. Um, but yeah, so she said so Raquel's sitting down with Katie to be like, oh, I wanted to just come over and like congratulate you. And then she turns it immediately is like, but you know, I also wanted to tell you, I think it's really wrong of you that you're rage texting Schwartz. And like I don't, and she says, I don't appreciate you telling him that you're going to take the dogs. And Katie's like, what a business of this is yours. Like if I'm mad at my ex-husband and we're going through a divorce and we like have some like heated exchanges, like it's not your problem. And it, I'm not going to sit here and listen to you school me on it. And so that was a wild interaction and like Raquel just like was not getting it. It's like she, someone told her that she, and it's probably Tom Sandoval behind the scenes, told her like, it's really hot when you step up to the plate and you like go for these people. And because she has like this crazy amount of confidence that's overconfident and totally out of line. Like she is not a part of some of these things that she is involving herself with. And I mean, it's just, it's insane. And so Katie's like, go away. Like, I don't want to talk to you. Like, get out of here. And she like, won't leave. And then 
Terry is who's sitting in the wings sort of is like, and Lala kind of comes for her too. But then Terry's like, yeah, like we need to just like end this. Raquel is so rude to Katie's mom. She like laughs off something that she says. She's like, uh, she's just, she's being so horrific to a mother. Like she does not have any respect for anyone. And that was really clear in that moment. And so then Terry's like, okay, well, this is getting like, you know, heated. We need to like end this. And then Sandoval starts defending Raquel to Terry. And so he starts yelling at Terry, which is again, rude. And meanwhile, Ariana is sitting over with Lisa Vanderpump crying her eyes out because she's like, I'm caught in the middle of Katie and Raquel and like two of my very close friends are fighting and I just feel like this is too much. Like I've been going through too many things. Like she just had lost her dog. She lost her grandmother. And I, she's like, I can't take anything more, which unfortunately she's about to. But she is over there crying. And meanwhile, rather than Sandoval, who Christina Kelly calls out, is like, Sandoval, stop, like, talking about this. And, like, don't worry about Katie. And don't worry about Raquel. Your woman is over there crying. Like, that's who you should be over defending. Like, like figure it out. And then meanwhile, Schwartz is, like, hiding behind the plants because he's like, I need to stay out of it. I was trying to, like, have a moment because I just had this emotional moment with my ex-mother-in-law and... Then they're all starting to scream at each other. And he's like, I can't deal with it. And so uh, Katie like pulls Sandoval out to the alley or the famous alleyway where we've gotten many iconic Vanderpump scenes. And, she, you know, they're fighting. And, they're, and she's like, I'm so tired of like you not defending me in these moments. I'm tired of like having to have this conversation with this person. I don't want to talk about Raquel anymore. You like need to stop telling her things that are make that she then is trying to tell me like that she's upset about rage texts. And so then of course, Raquel comes out into the alleyway and tries to insert herself. And again, it's like, you don't understand where your where your place is. Like these are two people in the midst of a divorce that just need to talk it out and maybe cry and fight. And you inter interjecting is like, so out of, out of the, her mind. Like, I just, I can't, I can't deal with it. It was, I was literally standing up, swaying back and forth with panic, like watching this whole thing play out. Cause it was just so insane. And so, you know, and then Raquel won't leave. So Katie's like, fine, I'll leave. Like, I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to talk to you. Like we are done. And so she walks inside then <laughs> there's like chaos breaking out everywhere. And like someone from Sir just brings out a cake with candles and start singing happy birthday to Lisa. And Lisa's like, oh God, oh God, this is like the worst timing of this. And so um, that was kind of epic. And then Kate, or Lisa ends up giving this like incredible toast, which is again, supposed to be the finale toast. And she's like crying and she's like, you guys are all fighting. And she's like, but ultimately we love each other. We've been on this journey together. Like we have love for each other, which is why we fight so hard. But I want you guys to find your way and everybody just looks so sad and is like crying from Lisa's toast and everyone's just like, you know, they're realizing how much they've all gone through. And, you know, Lisa's calling, you know, Ariana has gone through all this stuff. Lala is going through this, you know, crazy divorce and, and custody battle and all these things. And everyone's like crying and it's very emotional. And meanwhile, it's just showing Raquel, like she's just there smiling an evil smile and, Oh, it was chilling. Um, and so everybody's kind of getting their final slow-mo shots again. This is the this is the finale as we thought it was. And we go to end and then we get the preview for next week. And it's like the trailer, it's oh my god, I've probably watched it a million times. And I'm not saying that to be exaggerating because I truly don't know if I've done anything else. Every time I come upon it in a feed or online, I'm like, yeah, I gotta watch it again. It is, I can't wait for the episode. I can't believe that we're getting a three-part reunion. We've gotten the trailer for the reunion. The ev Everything is just too much. It's so good. Next week's episode looks iconic. It looks amazing. I can't wait to watch every moment of it. It's going to be a supersized end. Um, the next day we're getting, uh, Peacock is going to air all of the, the finale and the uh, reunion 
they're going to air them uncensored, which, yeah, so probably no kids in the room uh, for these uh, uncensored versions and supersized versions of the final four episodes. Um, and guys, the reunion trailer is something I have never seen before. Tom, I mean, there's so many notables. Tom, the Toms are like misaligned on what their lie is. And it looks that they get called out on that. Ariana is like, don't even look at me. You don't deserve to look at this. Uh, to Tom, I mean, there's so many, there's going to be so many moments that are just going to be historic for this franchise and for this, um, for this show. And so I cannot wait. I am just, I'm, I'm here for it all. And of course, we'll be here to talk about it. So um, that's, that's our recap this week. Uh, as always, don't forget, rate, subscribe, leave comments, hit me up on social. Uh, I'm at CM Vitrano on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Um, find me. Let's talk. Uh, I want to know what your thoughts are on this Vanderpump stuff because we're finally getting it. We're finally at Scandaval. Um, so excited. Um, but thanks so much for tuning in this week. Um, and until next time, have a great week and we'll talk soon. All right. Bye.